The 2006 Disney Channel original movie Cowbells is the tale of two teenage yogurt heiresses who have to save their father's company, which as it turns out is only a couple of small mistakes away from financial ruin. He should be using my foolproof business model where I take out high interest loans from the bank and use the money to play online poker. I haven't won a game yet, but I love getting attention in the chat rooms. Inspired by the popular Fox reality series, The Simple Life, this movie stars real life sisters and musical icons Allie and AJ as a pair of spoiled socialites who finally learn to get their hands dirty, just like Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, but on Disney Channel and a low budget. So instead of sex tapes and juicy couture, it's more like sequin tops and juice boxes. So let's join Courtney and Taylor as they investigate their father's missing money, find creative ways of dismantling the factory farm industry, and bask in the splash zone of a cow giving birth, all while their dad cluelessly chases butterflies in Ecuador. This is a weird one. So strap yourself in for another rich, creamy, installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we boil down our favorite movies, TV movies, and other media and scoop out the chunkiest curds to look at them and say, ugh, it looks like a clam. But anyway, today we got a real good one that has been highly requested. It's Cowbells from 2006. The only Disney Channel show that I'm aware of that was ever based off the likes of Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton. That makes it iconic. And I felt so smart at the time by realizing that it was supposed to be a spinoff of The Simple Life, but maybe we all knew that. Let me know in the comments. We'll get into all of the creamy farmhouse hijinks, but first make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. And I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Vessi. We are approaching LA's rainiest season of the year and my old canvas sneakers are just not built for moisture or water. Like most people, I hate the feeling of wet socks, but I also don't want to wear bulky rain boots every day. That's why my Vessi weekend sneakers are going to be on my feet all season long. Vessi shoes are made from patented Dymatex knit. It's lightweight, breathable, easy to clean, and 100% waterproof. Just like rain boots, but I mean, they look so good. The first time I put them on, I gasped because of how comfortable they are. They just hug my feet, and they're perfect for my everyday shoe. They're also vegan and made sustainably, and they're gonna keep my feet warm and dry for all of LA's rainy season. I've been using my car a lot less and just walking around the neighborhood to get places, so these are going to be a must-have. Vessi's make the perfect gift for you and your loved ones, especially for the upcoming rainy months. So if you're interested, make sure you check it out using the link below while they still have sizes in stock. You can also use my code Nick Deramio to save $25 off your Bessie shoes. Allie, credited as Allison Michaela in this film, was already famous on Disney Channel in Phil, Phil of the Future, but it was great to meet her sister, AJ, credited as Amanda Michaela in this. They already had a record deal with Disney at the time. And I mean, we know all of their songs. Into the Rush, iconic. Potential breakup song, so good. But you know what's crazy about this movie, Cowbells? There's barely any cows in it. This should be just caught talking about milk and yogurt. I was learning so much about yogurt production, I thought for a second I was on a sixth grade field trip. So Cowbells begins when we meet Taylor, who is played by Allie of Allie and AJ. Right off the bat, while she's taking her driver's test, we learn that she tends to get what she wants. She's a little manipulative. Has anybody ever told you you have really amazing eyes? You should think about wearing more pastels. Looks like he's feeling pretty smug about his pale green varicose veins right now. He said, looks like Papa pocket protectors on the cutting edge of fashion this time. They use this device where she's taking the driver's test to give some exposition. It's not the worst setup device I've ever seen. Throughout the movie, I was like, yes, strong script choice, good script. There are some times where I'm like, boo, we don't need the scene, but this is fun. Oh, this day's factory. Cutest? Sweetie, this wouldn't even be the cutest unemployment office. I've seen that cow statue in front of every local ice cream store in all of New England. I've been to all of them. That's why I have heart disease. While she's driving, she gets a call from her sister, Courtney, who's asking if she can get this orange dress, even though that's not her designated color. Taylor basically explains, oh, me and my sister are best friends, so we like divide up everything, favorite colors and all of that. I wish that this splitting up of like favorite actors and favorite music and everything was brought up throughout the movie. Like, oh, no, you can't listen to that song. I have pop jazz fusions. You know, they don't do it ever again, but would have been funny. Anyway, here's Courtney shopping for her the dress. Wrap it up. Our Aren't you at all concerned about the price? A thousand dollars. Um, are you the worst salesperson ever? Like, thanks for the price check, retail Rita. It's too bad everything can't cost three bucks like your costume jewelry and that lopsided haircut. That woman fully woke up from a side sleeping nap and then was like, oh, am I on? Great. A thousand dollars. One thousand dollars, madam. 
That seems normal for a dress. I'm just putting it out there. Anyway, here's why the sister is letting the sister, I'm already messing up the name, so hang on for that. Here's why Taylor is okay with Courtney getting an orange dress. The reason I'm being so cool about the whole orange thing is because it's her cotillion, her night. She should completely have whatever she wants. For those who don't know, a cotillion is like an American debutante ball where girls of a certain age are introduced to high society. Like when a show horse becomes mature enough to breed. I feel like every Disney movie or Lifetime movie is teaching me about some new customary teen party that didn't exist where I grew up. Did you have cotillions where you were? Or maybe it's like, I wouldn't have known about it because I wasn't that rich. It does seem like it's for rich ass richies. Like, oh, my dad owns Folgers. He's da Tom Folgers. And I'm his daughter, Coffee Thumb Folgers, Folgers, Folgers. The driving teacher is like, you seem to have a hard time focusing. So he's like almost about to flunk her. Let me just say this, if I don't pass today, I'm gonna be back here every possible second, requesting you and only you again and again. On second thought, <clears throat> you passed. Okay, she literally stopped looking at the road to wave at a building. So when she plows through a school pickup line, just cause she's smiling at the sun, the blood is on your hands. Next we meet the dad and his business partner. He, as we know, is the owner of Callum Creamery or yogurt or dairy or whatever. And the business partner presents him with a gift. It's like a really generous trip to Ecuador where he can finally get the picture of an elusive butterfly for his collection. And the plane leaves Monday. No, w wait, wait, I, I, I can't just get up and leave, Bob. This Monday? Yes, you can. Look, I'll handle things at work, trust me. Look, Reed, you're the only guy I know who belongs to a country club he's never even been to. Well, they won't let me into the pool there unless I bandage up my open wounds. Even though I already explained to them, I like the way chlorine makes them burn. Also, shout out to the dad stammering there. He said, what, I, I, I can't, 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 sorry, I'm not gonna go on this trip during this party that I'm paying for. It's my daughter's thing. Also, he's a single parent, he's a widower, so you would think this would be a bigger deal, but the daughter doesn't care either, so anyway. When Taylor comes home with her driver's license, we get a glimpse into how she's a little self-centered, like she wasn't considerate about dropping off their full-time live-in nanny, Corinne, at her home. And they're like, where did you get this custom sign that says congrats? I used our frequent shopper's card, which with the 12% discount and the $4.95 cash rebate means only really cost $171 and five cents. Oh, great. And is there a mail-in rebate when I scalp you and send them your hair? These girls love spending money that isn't theirs. I, I I relate, you know, I feel good about that too when I get to do it. Hi, yes, let's put that on the expense account. What expense account? I don't know, maybe, uh, just Dr. Charles. In addition to Taylor and Courtney, I need to write their name down or something, God. I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna waste all day trying to remember two blondies names just cause they're running around with alliterations. Taylor, Courtney, right there, now I know. So Taylor's thing is that she's really good at calculating sale prices. Like she can be like, oh, the rebate, plus the 20% off is 13 cents more. They're trying to show that she has like these hidden talents that come out even in her self-centered life. They also talk about Courtney being good at the computer, but they decided to never show us any of that. We're just supposed to be like, oh, okay. Even though later it doesn't really make sense because Courtney messes up something on the computers. Aside from these two little plot points that kind of get dropped off early on, I do like the script. So let's keep going. Taylor gets a present for getting her driver's license. So cute. <laughs> It looks exactly like the one mom's driving in all the old pictures. It is your mother's old car. I had Ralph down at the dairy return it to mint condition. He said it was pretty hard to scrub out all of her dried blood after the accident, but now you'd never know that's where her corpse was mangled. Happy birthday, sissy. We never find out how the mom was killed, but I like to think she died in a car accident, obviously. I had to, <laughs> that's the worst sentence I've ever said. I like to think she died in a car accident. But plot twist, this car is a stick shift. So the dad has hooked up a lesson with someone he knows from work. Plot twist, plot twist. Taylor knows who this person is from school and it's not someone she like gets along with. Here's him. Why should I let her wreck my truck? Because I bought you that truck to help me out. Taylor Callum is a spoiled, stuck up, condescending. Wow, condescending. 
Big word for a farm boy. Taylor said, you just wait. I'm gonna condescend you like a staircase, you pack sun print model. Sitting there covered in pig mess like someone deflated the brawny paper towel man. Things get off to a rocky start right away. He's like, hold this pig. And she's like, ew. Do I look like a pig holding kind of girl? No, you look like a shops at Target kind of girl. So they're trying to learn how to drive the stick shift. And then uh, he's like, oh, pull over. I have to check on Maggie the cow. She's pregnant. Do any day I'm just trying to make sure everything's okay. I thought I told you to wait in the truck. Did you at least put on the parking brake? No! Great, now I'm always gonna remember this as the lake that ruined my car, not just the one my little brother drowned in. Side note, that cow there was definitely the only cow in this whole movie, aside from the stupid statue outside the factory. This is my first time watching this movie, and I assumed that it was gonna be like, oh, these two girls gotta go work on a farm, and they're gonna be like getting splashed in the mud face by cows or whatever, real country stuff. Instead, they're only indirectly working with cows because they have to buy a lot of milk for their yogurt. And really this movie's more about how much milk it requires to make yogurt. This movie should be called Milkmaids. No, that makes him sound old. Anyway, the dad is mad because they have to pay all of this money to get the car recovered and fixed. And he's starting to be like, you girls gotta be more responsible. You're spending, it's gotta stop. You don't mean stop, stop, right? Pulling back, we can definitely do, but cut us off completely, we might die. That's not a good argument, sweetheart. As a child with a hefty life insurance policy, your death is actually the most profitable thing that can happen to me. I love how he's like, you guys gotta rein in your spending. And then as he's packing up for his trip, the daughter's like, oh no, no, you go. I'll have fun planning the party. $25,000, not one single penny more. Deal. As long as you save the leftover lemon wedges from the drinks so I can lighten the tips of my hair when I get back. Props to you, mama. Also, she's planning this cotillion with like four or five other girls and they're all putting in the same amount of money. So that's like a $100,000 plus party. I don't think you pay for that and then have the party in the same week. Like they should have already been planning this. Why do they make me suffer through every single logistical detail of putting together a pint of yogurt, but then they gloss over the realism of party planning. That's not good for a gay like me. For a gay like me, I need to see the party planner choosing napkins. Okay, so Corinne, their help is off for the day. I'm sure you're not supposed to call them their help. Their helper, their maid, or their home maid person. They don't have help cooking right now, so they're like on their own for meals, which is why they're making yogurt and soup together. <laughs> no way. Heather's at Tivanello's and she found the perfect tangerine slides for my dress. Why are we still here? Grab your keys and your credit card, I'll get my phone. What kind of Sanderson sisters stovetop were they heating that soup on? She's like, okay, I'm thinking chicken and rice. Buy a burning cauldron bubble. Have you girls ever heard of a conduction cooktop? Why? Ugh, this kitchen is out of control. Maybe this is how people like their home to look in 2006. God love ya. I mean, I was only 15 then, so I don't think I had strong taste. I was wearing the same green billabong t-shirt to every personal appearance. I loved anything that showed off how skinny my arms looked because I wanted arms that looked like Emma Stone. <laughs> That, is my gay showing? Is my gay showing yet? Check out my merch, by the way, in the description below. Also, I have a Patreon where you can get bonus content and exclusives from me every month at virtual watch parties, and you got to vote on my next clip breakdown. The girls come home shocked to find that their house is burning down. We can't go on like this, girls. I mean, this kitchen was your mother's favorite room in the whole house. She created some of our most popular recipes in here. Is that why you haven't updated the appliances since the day she died? Like, I know you're obsessed with mom, but it's okay to admit she was tacky. Yellow walls with yellow curtains. Ooh. Meanwhile, in this scene, you'll see Corinne. She's the maid and she barely gets any lines in this movie. I think they could have really brought up this connection as like their only remaining maternal source and someone who's a, a connection like she knew their mother. I'm insisting you take a summer job. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, you report to work at the dairy. Let's see you light my kitchen on fire when you're shoulder deep in cattle rectum, cheese curd chicks. Despite the girl's protestations, the next morning they have to get ready for work. And the dad is suddenly, like he was Mr. Nice Guy with the 25 grand parties, and now he's Mr. Full Metal Jacket on them. <laughs> Wow, not a cool use of your great grandfather's Civil War bugle. You know the Historical Society wanted to buy that. Also, I'm pretty sure you can't just like walk around blowing a bugle looking effortless. He's like, like, are you blowing air out of your mouth or are you drinking a Diet Coke? As Taylor and Courtney head off to work, the dad is like, all right, this is the last time you'll see me for the whole movie, so you. Where I'm headed is so remote, 
There's no cell service. I can't be checking up on you, so I need you guys to promise me that everything's gonna go okay. I mean, I'm not in control of earthquakes and murderers, Dad. Even a normal person couldn't keep that promise, and these girls got full body burns while making soup. Also, he says, I can't be checking up on you, but I guess he really means we won't be able to get in touch at all, even when everything is going wrong. Because this business falls apart, like, as soon as he leaves, and they can't have, they have no way of telling him. Like, I don't know, is he sleeping in the jungle? Does he have a hotel? He's looking for butterflies, not herding cows transcontinental. Once the girls get there, they're told, oh no, they won't just be doing any old office work. They're gonna be doing the hands-on creamy stuff. Well, the truth is your father was very specific about wanting you out here on the production line. We will start you with something simple. Like them? Wearing that? Sis, we're just trying to quickly cover up that Asian-inspired outfit, complete with chopsticks in your hair. I'm sorry, is your traditional Chinese hand fan in the break room? Disney said, we love Asian culture. Like, sweet and sour sauce, a yum. Also, I love how they're like, we've got to wear these hair nets on the floor, but first let's walk through it with your hair out, your tit in the wind, who cares? Like, do you guys care about pubes in the food or don't you? Get it straight. Courtney said, you can't dim my cultural appropriation, and she jammed those two chopsticks back through the hair net like she was a plate of lo mein. Also, she's about to take a picture of Taylor and send it to her crush, Jackson, at the farm. I'm so gonna send a picture of you like this to Jackson Mead. Courtney, give me that! <laughs> Excuse me, but my sister's phone kinda accidentally flew into one of your tubs. That's really bad. I already got in trouble for adding a flash drive of tasteful nudes to all the Activia. I'm trying to attract a Jamie Lee Curtis type. Obviously, it's bad when stuff gets into the yogurt. Well, this is great. Now, what are we supposed to do? Scrap the whole run? Hello, why right, call me? I'm right here. Problem solved. Okay, curdle fingers, you could have at least used your sister's hair chopsticks to fish that out. Right away, we find use for Taylor's math skills. And how do you suppose I make up for the four minutes of lost production time? If you ramp it up by 15 seconds for 16 minutes, then you'll regain your lost time and be back on schedule. This is coming out of your pay. It costs either $2.49 or you have to hug me for 30 seconds in the cold storage room. Thomas is creepy. I don't like him. Throughout this movie, he's nothing but negative. Always running his mouth with his hair flat on his face like a dirk. A dirk. A dirk, dirk, dirk. Again, this movie teaching me a lot more about dairy production than I wanted, needed, or expected. They could also call this movie Dairy Queens. They probably didn't because of copyright, but cowbells, it's just a stretch for me. I know I'm not a tycoon of making yogurt by any means, but it seems like they've got a lot of people doing jobs that machines could do. And that comes up later, so I'm not the only one thinking it. Oh, okay, this one's not good. Oh. Oh my God, Yogurtina Fingerlina, do you think we can get some dairy out the door that you haven't put your bare hand in? Disney Channel is not the platform where I usually see all of this slurpy glurpy fist action. Once they get on lunch break, the icy reception definitely catches the girls off guard. Yeah, we're rich, we're hot, and our dad's the boss. Eat it up like that store brand bologna sandwich, you spoiled sacks of milk. Courtney. Taylor, what are you doing here? Mr. Press, have I didn't tell you? Daddy sent us to work. Mm. Ah, I guess that explains this morning's production slowdown. Life in a small company, no secrets. That's why I legally have to tell underage coworkers that I am a registered sex offender. Where are your lunches? There isn't a caterer? Well, until you can take that up with your father, you'll have to rely on our machines. <laughs> That lady was really into retrieving her banana. She was like, haha, it's the only fruit that's wearing a raincoat. As they're eating, someone catches Courtney's eye. Au revoir. Who's that? His name is Philippe, an exchange student from France living with the Millers for the year. My dad got him an internship for the summer. Huh. She's like, huh, I guess me and my dad have the same taste in men. Tall, foreign, and dressed like Michael Myers. The country bumpkin f***ery that goes on right now, I just have to tell you about it. Oh, yeah. It's Monday, I forgot. You're gonna love this. This is one of your dad's ideas called homemade jam. Nope. Anytime your boss tries to make your lunch break more fun or sociable, you know there's about to be a human rights violation. Early in the morning, rising to shine, joining my friends in the working line. Happy to be right here, you see. Working at the creamery. Reba McIntyre, she never made it to Nashville. Have you ever seen such half-hearted dancing? They're like, okay, lunch break dance. 
This is so embarrassing. Also, this song is ridiculous. The whole thing is about their day working at the farm. She's like, eating nothing but yogurt. Like, you should eat other things than yogurt. That might be too much calcium. And we're bound to call this home. We're happy to be right here, you see. Together at the creamery. Taylor, Courtney, your father is the leader of a cult. Together at the creamery is their helter skelter. You need to run. And we're proud to be a family. Together at the creamery. Yeah. Girl, if you ever write a song about how much you love working with your people down at the yogurt factory, I got a lot of news for you. Get a Netflix subscription or something, sis. The girls get into it though. They live, they wanna be part of it. Me and my sister are really good singers. Can we do backup? Thanks anyway, but uh, this band's for real working folk. I think you'd be better off joining the Pretenders. <laughs> okay, Thomas, your penis envy is on full display at work right now. Also the Pretenders, sorry, I'm not broke ass dusty enough to understand what that even means. So I feel like I get the last laugh. After lunch, the girls really want to make a better impression. Maybe if we moved a bit faster. Let's show them what the Callan girls are made of. <laughs> nice work, girls. Now where are you going to scrounge up two more buckets of cow after birth? Also, can we get some non-slip shoes for the sisters over here. These girls really make a lot of messes. It's a lot. Like the car rolling into the lake, the spilling, the messy yogurt. It's like, come on. Can't you just focus a little bit more? They should have told them not to wear heels here. That's my main complaint. They're not getting all the info they need to succeed. That should be in the handbook. Some work safe policies. Peter Palmer. This should get you one step closer to that new patio. Not this week. No, this one's going towards my daughter's braces. Aw, but if you fix little Janie's overbite, who's gonna play the donkey in the Christmas pageants? Also, just take the check. We don't need a sob story about how gross your daughter's mouth is. This weekly payroll distribution seems old fashioned to me. Believe it or not, my darlings, you don't get paid unless you work an entire week. That's no fair. How am I supposed to buy nail polish and bubble bath? Shoplift them from the self checkout like every other 16 year old. You expect Shrimpy Sherman here to have all your financial answers? Keep the line moving. Outside, Taylor runs into Jackson, who she, you can tell has a crush on him. And she's like, I have your check for your car and I want to visit that pregnant cow. Can I bring it over later at seven? And he's like, yeah. Then we go into this scene where the two girls are having dinner with their friend. This scene is completely unnecessary. You can see that Jackson is getting all done up for her to come over and drop off the check. And then she is too, but she falls right to sleep because she's so tired from working. So Jackson is waiting, but he's been stood up. Meanwhile, the other two girls go talk to Philippe's exchange brother about the party. Because I'm sure you're all hurt thinking you weren't invited and To I... be honest, I didn't even know there was gonna be a party. But you wanna come, right? There'd be video games? Richie, it's, it's a dance party with tons of beautiful girls like us. <laughs> Oh. Richie is the asexual representation Disney needs. He's like, I already see tons of girls at school, okay? I'm not impressed. Like, we get it. Our mall has an Aeropostale. Speaking of things that are fake French, we get to meet more of the boyfriend because the plan is working. He's like, yeah, you can invite my exchange brother. Wow, so this is my first American, um, how you call it? It's a cotillion. Which is actually a French word, so I'm a little surprised that that's the one you had trouble with there, Lumiere. Seem to have no problem with English when it comes to saying nice tits. Anyway, Philippe is in. He's like, I would love to come to your wedding. <laughs> His accent is out of control bad. The next morning, uh, Allie wakes up and she's like, oh no. Jackson, I stood him up. I blew it. But he hates my guts. The really bad news is, you have to go to work again. And you better get ready to have that realization every morning for every day of the rest of your life. Find something you love to do, kids. It's the only way. As soon as they get into the factory, there's trouble a brewing. Our checks bounce. All of them. Hey, well, maybe they know something. Where's your food? How come our checks bounce? Yeah, where's our money? Okay, why are the yogurt slaves acting extra pushy today? We seem to be broke. There's no possible way. Unfortunately, there is a way. Apparently, your father took more than luggage on his trip. Well, I mean, he always travels with his CPAP machine. Also, can we ask Fran to re-examine why she's wearing a hairnet if all of her hair is outside of it? Thanks, Fran. I'm suspicious right away when this guy comes in being like, oh, bad news girls, your dad's a thief. Like, mm? this whole trip was your idea though, so why would he use it as an opportunity to steal and then escape? Also leaving his daughters behind? I can assure all of you that Reed Callum is a true humanitarian. Look, before we jump to terrible, damaging conclusions, apparently your father took more than luggage on his trip. This company stops working to have a lot of group conversations. Wasn't it a huge deal when we lost four minutes earlier? Now we're stopping everything to play Clue in the Moo Moo Zoo? I do really like, I'll say again, this part of the writing where the script finds clever ways to contradict itself 
that are subtle and intelligent, like with the condescending line. Condescending? Big word for a farm boy. But also right here where he comes in making this damaging accusation and then says, no one make any damaging accusations. It spells out pretty well like that he's probably has something to do with this without over explaining it to the audience. Daddy would never rip you guys off, which is why we need to get back to work at once. No! Ooh, that was our scalding hot bleach pipeline. She's gonna have a really hard time getting pregnant now. The girls are like, let's tell daddy's business partner that when he sees dad to say we believe in him. But then when they get there, the guy's already made off. Why is this in the trash? And all broken? What if it's Uncle Bob who's the crook? What if that's how come he gave dad such a generous trip? To get him out of the way and set him up? Too bad he didn't count on us. The cream sucking sisters. No. The curd girds. Mm, the gals with milky discharge. It's getting worse for some reason. The names are just not working. I guess that's why they landed on cowbells. This is the picture that the dad just gave as a present. So it's very shocking that it's thrown away and basically foolproof evidence that Uncle Bob stole the money. P.S. in this scene, they're like, and he's not even really our uncle. So don't worry about the family traitorship. It's just some sleazy guy. They go to Fran's house who helps them put this together. We're sorry to barge on your oh. Fran. But look. Oh. oh, very disturbing girls, but it's not a crime to poorly Photoshop hair onto yourself. They're like, nope, we think he stole the stuff. Something about this guy always seemed a bit off to me. Plus, it's no secret that Bob was furious when your dad wouldn't sell the dairy. Sell the dairy? Yeah, old man Ketchum wanted to buy us out. Your dad wouldn't hear of it because we'd all be out of work. I mean, it does seem like a lot of you are getting paid to put lids on yogurt. I don't really see how that needs an artisan's touch. Maybe it was limiting business decisions like this that allowed all of the money to be sucked out of one single bank account overnight. You gotta diversify that income, baby. You gotta put some of it in stocks. You gotta have some of it in insurance. You gotta have people working on the ground, sending out flyers. You gotta have a street team of cows going out there saying, moo, 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 we got yogurt for you. You gotta listen to me. I know all about the yogurt business. Why? I have yeast infections. While they're there, the girls get a home-cooked meal. <laughs> Whoa, what are we doing? Feeding an army here? <laughs> Oh, this one's for an elderly neighbor next door. Every week we force feed her a large pizza so we can keep collecting her government checks. It's just the neighborly thing to do. Later on, Courtney is with all of her stuck up friends and they're trying to make plans with their cotillion party in mind. But they're having a hard time getting all their fancy extras with their limited budget. There is the one who insists we simply must have steak and lobster. This isn't some stupid business banquet, Courtney. Chicken is a tacky no-no. Well, then I guess we should uninvite that ponytail of yours, Sarah, since it's looking extra crispy today. Courtney's like, let me take the numbers to my sister. She's great with sales and we'll figure this out. However, Taylor does not have the response she was hoping to hear. You see, everyone at work is about to just walk out because they don't believe they're going to have any money for their paychecks coming up. Naturally, Taylor's main concern, along with Fran and the other adults at the store, they're trying to be like, well, how are we going to get the money to pay for everyone's paychecks so that we don't basically have to shut down production and lose out on all these sales? It would ruin your dad. I think we should use your party allowance to cover the dairy worker salaries. I can't do that. If I can't contribute my share, how can I be part of it? I guess you can't. I'm really sorry, Court, but this is totally a family emergency. Hey, it's not my emergency. Hey, why don't we make it a police emergency? Seems like reporting this grand larceny might be a good next step. But hey, don't listen to me. I can't calculate sale prices like a Texas Instruments. Taylor basically backs off and is like, all right, we won't use your money. It was just a suggestion. And she also can't reach Jackson, who's like, I'm not forgiving her for missing my dropping off the check date. <laughs> like, come on. You're being a little stubborn. She fell asleep. Meanwhile, everybody at the office is like on the brink of just walking out. The reality is most of us live paycheck to paycheck. I'm as loyal as anyone, but if there's no future here, we want to know that now. Hey, there will always be a future in fermented foods. Now, if you're truly loyal to my father, you'll all put a pint of yogurt up your ass and get back to work. Everyone's murmuring about how they got to get out of here. So Taylor gets rid of Courtney. She's like, will you get my phone out of the car? And then she gets on stage and is like, I've got a plan. I was wondering if I could fix it so there was money for your paychecks. <laughs> Come on, you're a kid. Even you can't have that kind of cash laying around. I think I can get it. How? By selling your solid gold sports car? <laughs> or auctioning off your collection of designer handbags. <laughs> okay, you know what? Forget it. You can all lose your jobs then. I hope your child's starvation is quick and painless. These dairy workers are really just letting her have it. Let's get real for a second, all right? You and your sister? 
are nothing but a pair of spoiled brats. And what? You're gonna have to start on OnlyFans to pay for your daughter's braces. So we've both got stuff on the side to work on, okay? No judgment. Also, if anyone's gonna help, I would think that her, the daughter, would be the one in a small company. There has to be some way to get in touch with this dad. Like, there was a really big emergency. He said he wouldn't be able to check in, not like, if the world falls down and our, all our money is stolen, don't call me. I'm too busy catching butterflies. Outside at the car, Courtney gets in touch with Philippe again. You're still coming to my party, right? Cannot wait. One of the big traditions at these parties is a special deal they call the spotlight dance. It can be a bit embarrassing. But she's that is the beauty of being a foreigner. Everybody's a stranger, so get what they think. Okay, can we get the French guy to remove the washcloth that seems to be wrapped around the base of his tongue? Or oh, the thing about being a farmer is that no, no touch your sink. Ah! We gotta let him stop drinking the raw yogurt because the mucus is making him inscrutable. So Taylor goes to the bank with the guy who hands out the money and is like, all right, here's a check for 20 grand to save all of the jobs. That still leaves Courtney with five grand for the rest of her party, but Taylor gave the money away without consulting Courtney, so of course she's mad. It's my party budget, my money. What if I explain the situation to you? You've done enough damage, thanks. Frankly, I think this is what you wanted all along. My party's wrecked. Everybody still remember yours is the best. Please, Courtney, if I wanted to pull focus from your party, I would just go missing for a few days. Look at this pale ivory face. I would be on all of the news stations. After finally dropping off the check, Taylor is venting to Jackson about all of her problems when suddenly... Jackson, come quick, I need you. Martha's getting ready to calf. Taylor's like, perfect, a new baby cow. Hey, how many more of these belts and boots can I get out of that? Suddenly, she's the cow whisperer up in the barn. That bull, she keeps eyeing him like she'd prefer a little privacy. Name one female in the universe who'd want to be on display going through this. What, you mean childbirth on a barn floor when there's horse flies swarming around their cervix? If it was good enough for Rudy Giuliani's mother, then it's good enough for this cow. But for some reason that works. When she shoes the bull away, the cow is like, oh, I can magically pass this cow through my vagina. Cow vagina. Is anyone gonna get mad in the comments because I said cow vagina? If you're mad about cow vagina, then you need to face facts. Every cow has a vagina and it's real close to the place where you get your milk every morning. And if you're not ready to understand that, you ain't here to party. You ain't here to party. <laughs> this is the most painless cow birth I've ever seen. I've never seen one other than this. Just cleaner than you would think. Okay, okay, here it comes. Check it out. <laughs> Oh, well done, Martha. It's a girl, it's like we were hoping for. Because the boys are immediately castrated and boxed up at the veal processing plant. Anyway, do you want to stay for dinner? This touching moment of cow touching is touching. Welcome to the world, little one. You were born so we could harvest your breast milk. After this, I don't know why she changes her clothes, but they're having a heart to heart. Maybe there was a deleted scene where she gets more like mud splashed on her, I'm sure. Maybe that's why you should get to know a person before you go making a bunch of judgments. Sort of the way you did with me. Sort of how we both did. Just based off both their costumes and the farm setting, this actually counts as Disney Channel's first lesbian kiss. That golden hour moo moo. Yes, romance, cinema. At work, Courtney is super mad at Taylor. What are you doing, Callum? That beeping means you have to reset the expiration date. Thomas, I'm about to visit your mom in the hospital and reset her life support machine if you don't take three big steps back. In a huff, because she was just arguing with Taylor about her party on July 10th, she accidentally resets the expiration date to July 10th. That's gonna come back to bite us later. But first we have this other conflict. That's one thing I'll say about this movie is they add so many yogurt production conflicts that it's like actually really stressful. I don't know if they needed all of these. Sometime yesterday, the storage silo refrigeration system shut down. All our milk's gone bad. No worries, everyone. We sell cottage cheese now. I repeat, the chunky milk is cheese. No, it's a real problem. They have no milk because Uncle Bob should have been watching the refrigeration units, but since he was gone, all of the milk went bad. So now the company has to either buy a bunch of new milk or they're gonna miss a bunch of orders. Meanwhile, Courtney's trying to see what she can do with the five grand she has left. If you can't deliver your full share, then it breaks my heart to tell you, but you're out. Love you. <laughs> I don't want that color. If I was that manicurist, I would bite that little toes off so fast and go <laughs> right into the pool. 
And I'd say, oh, it looks like flip-flop season's over. Then I would go and find her little brother, and I'd go, booga, 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 just to scare him with my bloody mouth. So anyway, that's why I didn't pass nail school. The tension between Taylor and Courtney reaches a fever pitch at work. Without the cash to replace a spoiled milk, everybody's gonna lose their job. I'm sorry this became my responsibility when- Girl, what are you not getting? If there are no people left to make your dead mom's yogurt recipe, then your dad won't have any more money to buy you different curling wand attachments. Then how will you make your hair look like bowls of ramen? Taylor even goes to Jackson and is like, do you think your dad could lend us the milk on credit? My dad's a really good man. Too good. He'll help anybody in trouble. But that's no way to keep a small farm like ours in business. If we take on one more dollar of debt, it's gonna crush us. Is no one buying any f***ing yogurt in this town? Why is every business just like one tube of gogurt away from financial collapse? Also, can we give a full movie to the cat in the background who's being friendly with those horses? That's what the Disney Channel really meant to put on screen. After Taylor is like, you never think of anyone but yourself, Courtney storms off to her friend's house and catches her in a vulnerable moment, having her dress be made. She's like, you weren't supposed to see this, I'm embarrassed. I thought you found something fabulous at Holly's. I did, we can't afford it. This is gonna be even better. I didn't even know you could buy the fabric used for the booths at Rainforest Cafe. Her friend basically comes clean and is like, you never noticed, but your designer stuff always made it really hard for me to feel compared to you. You kind of don't notice it because you don't really think about anyone other than yourself. Really that bad? Why wouldn't you be? I mean, your whole life's been a total fairy tale. Underneath, you're a really good person. Thanks. I think it's time for me to do better than that. I think the world is ready to hear my country album. No, sweetheart, go work at a soup kitchen. Don't get it twisted. Next, back at home on Courtney's like kind of parade of redemption, she speaks to Corinne, the maid. She knew better than anybody that her good life was just a happy accident. You mean like when your husband died and you could come work for us full time? I hate that Corinne is a total afterthought here. I hate that I don't believe that that's a real accent they gave her. It seems kind of like the token wise maid character from another country. Whatever, let me know your thoughts on that. Maybe I'm over reacting. Taylor is desperate to get the milk she needs to fix this milk issue. So she gets her newly redone car and sells it to some guy that works there for way below asking price for only nine grand. And she uses that money to pay Jackson for half the milk. But by the time she gets home, Courtney's there and she's like, I'm sorry, I've changed my mind. You can have my five grand that's left for the party thing. I'm returning my dress so that we can get another thousand. So that finally gives him enough money to buy the milk. Meanwhile, Courtney gets asked out by Philippe if he he wants to go to the country club with his exchange family. The Midhouse invited you to be their guest. As it turns out, I'm not going to be a part of the battalion. Since that is even more reason for you to come with me, we will create our own spotlight to celebrate you tonight. I don't know what the f she's saying, but girl, I am living. Philippe speaks exclusively like he's deep throating a baguette, so don't worry too much about his dialogue. It was all Philippe's idea. He's quite taken with you, Courtney. We should dance, no? Will you excuse us? As long as nobody's making me dance, you're completely excused. Does it look like anyone's asking you to dance, Richie? The police literally use your school picture in the open shooter pamphlet. While at the country club, Sarah approaches Courtney for some trouble. Frankly, given all your desperate cries of poverty, I'm quite amazed you can even afford dinner. Just in case you care. Turns out we're gonna end up with every single thing we wanted, despite the fact that you nearly sabotaged the whole event. Oh, I can still sabotage the event, Sarah. You just might drop by and take a in the champagne fountain, and I'm gonna lock eyes with you while I do it. Ask Courtney how bothered she is by this vicious attack. Twirl, girl. Love that for her. Ever developing these romances, Taylor and her beau are getting comfortable on the couch. <clears throat> Popcorn? Okay, no offense, but putting that bowl of popcorn on a tray to bring it out here is just showing off. Like, we get it, Corinne, you're a maid. This isn't Eloise at the plaza. Now that everything is all good between the sisters, they're excited to get invited to a good old-fashioned country hoedown on the night of the fancy party so that they can celebrate this hellacious week being over. And the two girls are happy to go. I'm the girl in pink getting her life on the grass dance floor. It's Friday night and I got my brand new zip up hoodie. I own this town. After everything you've done, you should at least get to have your spotlight dance. Folks, folks, sorry to interrupt. 
got an emergency. I lost my Apple Watch up a cow's ass again, y'all. But the good news is we're counting all of that cow's steps for the day. The emergency here is basically that Courtney put today's date as the expiration date, so all of their milk and yogurt deliveries are being refused because they're labeled with the wrong expiration date. It doesn't matter that it's a mistake. There's nothing they can do about it. Couldn't we put new lids on and stamp them with the right date? No. Health code regulations strictly prohibit a product from being sold once it's been resealed. We have to start a whole new run from scratch or lose at least 14 major accounts. And then where will this town get their probiotics? I'll have to go back into business selling DIY fecal transplants again. Jackson's dad is like, no, we'll donate the milk because we have no choice. Because if this dairy goes under, then we'll lose half of our business as farm milk sellers. You know, it's a lot of this crosstalk about more milk. I'm like, can you guys just and make the yogurt. Because even then, when they magically get the milk they need and they have a plan, it's still not good enough. We would need people unloading and reloading the fleet of trucks. Unless you've got 25 extra bodies, it's impossible. Okay, Fran, you go wake up that elderly neighbor of yours and tell her to put on some work boots. This is exactly why we've been keeping her alive. Doesn't it feel like they're just stacking conflicts? They're like, okay, we don't have any milk though. Okay, but I have milk. Okay, but we don't have enough people yet. I'll go get the people. And that's exactly what Courtney does. She rushes off to the cotillion and she makes a plea on the microphone to everybody being like, please, a lot of good people are gonna lose their jobs if you guys don't help us out, I'm begging you. Of course, Sarah is like, no, we don't want to. Give me back that microphone. Come through, long wear cream eyeshadow. That's not budging. Once the dessert parade comes out, the rest of high society is like, sorry, can't help you. So Courtney heads back to the factory dejected. So they're not coming? No. Did I hear this place could use a little help? Daddy! You're here! Great news, Daddy. Your business partner robbed you and we forgot to tell the police. Ow! Well, I was on my trip and missing you two and realizing where I really wanted to be was home. That single dad code forgot kicked out of the hotel for solicitation. As you'll notice, a lot of those high society snobs changed their mind and came back. And then when I went to look for you at the club, this whole crew pounced on me. And after you left, we all started talking and we were like, wow. What Courtney said was so right. Thanks, Marissa. Now let's toss it over to someone who isn't wearing the worst possible lip color for their complexion. Frosted, glossed. Also, are we not gonna get any retribution for Uncle Bob who stole all this money? Like, wouldn't it be cool if he showed up right now to try to be stealing something back from the office or something and they were like, you, you're the one who stole the money. And then the police caught him and they were like, oh, rats. But no, that's not what happens. We don't ever see Uncle Bob again. He just gets away with his crimes. But the whole town or whatever kicks in. They go into overdrive drive, making the yogurt, and then at the end, Courtney's finally able to have her spotlight dance with Philippe, but it's the old country way with headlights and a band playing the worst songs ever. And then later on, the girls have to reckon with their new life. How's it going? We'll survive. Barely. <sighs> it's really that bad? Yep. Money's gone. It's basically like we're starting over. Just you, me, this giant house, our full-time maid, and my successful company. You girls are gonna sound so brave when you embellish this for your college application essays. And the movie ends with the girls loving to go to work because they can't spend money anymore. So they're like, we love going to the work now that we can't be at the mall. It's like, that's not how it works. Watch TV. But anyway, what do you guys think of Cowbells? Was this a favorite movie of yours growing up? I'm glad I finally watched it. Um, it definitely feels nothing like The Simple Life, so. Definitely a miss for me there, but it is a cute movie. It had a strong script for the most part. Felt a little boring to me because I was like, I'm sick of talking about yogurt. I'm sick of yogurt and the problems that come with it. But let me know your thoughts below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns just like this from me. Also hit that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you always be the first to know when I've got a hot batch of fresh yogurt. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can get exclusive content content and monthly benefits. So check that out if you're interested. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for cowbelling it up with me today. I will see you next time.